Good health to all from Rexall. It's the Phil Harris Alice Faye Show, presented by the makers of Rexall drug products and 10,000 independent Rexall family druggists. Good evening. This is your Rexall family druggist. Welcoming you for the 10,000 independent druggists who have added the word Rexall to their own store names. You know us by the orange and blue Rexall sign on our windows. The sign means that we carry the 2,000 or more drug products made by the Rexall Drug Company. Each one scientifically compounded to do a job for you. Take Rexall's famous mouthwash, MI-31, as an example. MI-31 is the designation of a special antiseptic formula that kills contacted germs in a matter of seconds when used full strength, yet will not harm delicate membranes of the mouth and throat. Uncompromising quality like this is what we family druggists are talking about when we tell you you can depend on any drug product that bears the name Rexol. Good health to all from Rexol. And now your Rexall family druggist brings you the Phil Harris Alice Faye Show, written by Ray Singer and Dick Chevrolet, with Elliot Lewis, Walter Tetley, Robert North, Janine Roos, Anne Whitfield, Walter Scharf and his music, yours truly, Bill Foreman, and starring Alice Faye and Phil Harris. <laughs> Recently, we have seen the revival of many fads that were popular 20 years ago, such as the square dance, long skirts, short hair, and now the ukulele. It's been a windfall for Frankie Remley, as he's an expert on the uke, <laughs> and has been giving lessons to all the youngsters in town. Now, look, I've been teaching you this tune for three weeks. Now, try once more, and this time, get it right. A one, a two... Five foot five, five, five foot two, eyes up, five foot two, eyes up blue. But oh, what those five feet no, 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 do no, no. <laughs> no. too high. It is not too high. Then why is your nose bleeding? <laughs> five foot two, eyes up blue. But oh, what those five feet could do has... Anybody see my no, 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 Curly, no. Turned up nose. Curly, no. You're fighting me. <laughs> you haven't got it right. What do you mean I haven't got it right? Are you going to try to tell me how to play the ukulele? That's my business. <laughs> Why, 20 years ago, I was the rage of Nashville, Tennessee. I was known as Yuki Harris. <laughs> ah, those were the happy days. I'll never forget my theme song. Egypt must be heaven, cause my mummy came from there. <laughs> or, or, <laughs> pull up the awning, mother. Daddy's leading a shady life. <laughs> or, or, yeah, I know. Let's take it easy, flaming youth. We don't play it that way nowadays. Oh, what do you know? Hey, Alice, honey, how'd you like the way I did the tune? Oh, I thought it was the cat's pajamas. <laughs> Are you through with your lesson strumming, Sam? Yes, I'm through. Good. Now take off your blazer and I'll hang it up with your raccoon coat. <laughs> what are you fellas trying to prove with these ukulele lessons? It's a fad with the teenagers. Yeah. All us kids are taking it up. <laughs> kids? You two are kids? Of course. A guy's no older than he feels. Inside, where it counts, we're young. <laughs> Outside, where it shows, you're old. <laughs> oh, you two have done a lot of infantile things in your time, but don't you think this is overdoing it a little, taking up the ukulele at your age? Well, what's the matter with that? I don't see nothing wrong with it. Oh, you don't see anything... Oh, Phil, how stupid can a grown man get? Good morning, Philip. <laughs> I give you Exhibit A. <laughs> oh, Francis, I'm glad you're here. Maybe you can help me with a song I'm learning to play on my ukulele. Oh, Willie, don't tell me you've taken up the uke, too. Well, hasn't everybody? It's a fad that's sweeping the country. How you doing with it, Willie? Oh, splendidly. Uh, Philip, give me a uke and I'll show oh, you. Oh, no, you don't. It's my uke, and nobody's gonna play it but me. Well, is, it, is it in tune? 
Is it in tone? Hmm. You're talking to a guy with perfect pitch. <laughs> Hit a glass or something. No, never bother. <laughs> My dog has fleas. <laughs> My dog has fleas. Your voice is kind of lousy, too. <laughs> uh, Philip, can you play Yakahoo Hickadoola? If you can say it, I can play. <laughs> Yakahoo Hickadoola, Yakahoo Hickadoola. Well, gee whiz. Somebody say something. We're standing here like a bunch of dopes. Who's lying? <laughs> Alice, that was the song that I was going to sing at the Halloween party. What Halloween party? Well, we're having a masquerade at the club. What, co what costume are you wearing, Willie? Well, I'm undecided. I could wear a leopard skin and go as Tarzan, or I could pad my shoulders and go as Superman. Why don't you lather your head and go as a short beard? <laughs> Francis, must you always be a buffoon? <laughs> there are times when you should be serious. There are occasions that don't call for a funny answer, and I feel this is one of them. <laughs> I get one crummy joke in a half an hour, and he hates me for it. <laughs> Say, Willie, I have an idea. Why don't you go as a Canadian mounted policeman? What? Why, that's a splendid suggestion. It certainly is. Let's help him, Curly. I'll go over and get him a policeman's outfit. And I'll take him down to taxidermist and have him mounted. <laughs> oh, you fellas are so funny. I bet you just a howl when you put ladies' hats on. <laughs> Goodbye, Alice. Oh, fellas, you hurt Willie's feelings. Well, now that we ruffled his feathers, he can go as a powder pigeon. <laughs> With his face, he'd make a better jabberwocky bird. Phil, what's a jabberwocky bird? Oh, well, honey, it's a strange-looking bird from Alice in Wonderland. <laughs> Some guy wrote a song about it. Oh, I'd love to hear you sing it, dear. Would you really, darling? <laughs> oh, for crying out loud. <laughs> You people have used every way to get into a song, but this is the most disgusting. One time there was a mountaineer who felt so mighty brave, he took his trusty gun and went to a dark, dark cave. The reason for his venture was a story that he'd heard about a bad, ferocious creature called the Jabberwocky Bird. Now, when he got into that dreary cave, our hunter saw a sight. The Jabberwock had seven heads, and each one was a fright. He turned around and headed home, running all the way. To all the folks who waited there, the mountaineer did say, was really and the slithy toasted gyre and gimble in the wave. Old Mimsy were the poor groves and the mommy mass of grave. Oh, Frabjous Day, Kaluka lay, and from you spander snatch. My aim was spoiled by seven heads, but that bird I will catch. Then back again into that cave that mountaineer did go. But how he'd finally get that bird, he really didn't know. This time the mountaineer was armed with knives and traps and bait. He had to catch that jabberwock or meet a sorry thing. Inside the cave, that gruesome bird confronted him once more. The mountaineer had seven fits and fell right to the floor. He offered up a hasty prayer and murmured, it's the end. But seven jabberwocky heads said, can't we please be friends? We'll really in the slithy toes and gyre and gimble in the wave. We'll mimsy in the four groves and the mommy rass out grave. Oh, frab just day, kaluka lay, and from his bander snatch. The mountaineer said, you mean we're pals? And seven heads said, natch. The mountaineer just shook his head. He couldn't trust his ears. The jabberwocky's seven pairs of eyes were filled with tears. The ugly bird broke down and sobbed, a witch made me like this. And jabberwocky, I must be until a man I kiss. The mountaineer could not resist that bird's unhappy plea. He bravely puckered up his lips and said, you'll soon be free. They kissed and seven heads became just one of golden curls. The ugly chopper walk was then the prettiest of girls. 
They frilled in the slithy toves and gyred and gimbled in the wave. They mimsied in the boar groves and the mommy grass out grave. Oh, frab just day, kaloot, kalay, and from just bandersnatch. That couple now have seven kids. And that is quite a bad. <laughs> Well, if you're through vocalizing, we'll get on with the ukulele lesson. All right, Frankie, okay. Hey, let's run over that hot tune that we were rehearsing. You ready? Yeah. One, two. Collegiate, collegiate. Yes, we are collegiate. Nothing intermediate. No man. Hey, fellas. Trousers, baggy, and our clothes look raggy. But we're rough and ready. Yeah. Hey, hot shot. Garters are the things we never wear. And we have not any use for red hot flannels. The very, very seldom in a hurry. And our elderly wear collegiate rough, rough, rough. I was just singing, and I asked Frankie to join in. Afraid to sing alone, huh? <laughs> need somebody to share the blame. I don't need nobody to take the blame for my singing. My voice is my own fault. <laughs> what are you doing here anyway, kid? What do you want? I want you guys to do me a favor. You see, I'm in trouble, and you two are the only ones who can help me. Oh, oh this little tyke has come to the right place for help, hasn't he, Rem? Yeah. <laughs> Your trouble is good and serious, I hope. <laughs> What's wrong, Julia? Just this. The little fellow with the bow and arrow has smitten me. <laughs> <laughs> I am in love. With a girl? What do you think? With a crocodile? Uh, with a what? You think I'm in love with a crocodile? <laughs> In your case, I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> Bill, stop making fun of Julius. The boy's in love. Try to help him. Oh, all right. Julius, my boy, tell me all about this beautiful love affair. In what swamp did you first meet this crocodile? <laughs> oh, Bill, cut it out. Stop this nonsense. I don't think it's nonsense. I know a guy who married a kangaroo. Oh, Frankie, please. They met at a college hop. <laughs> He finally had to divorce her. She kept kicking him out of bed. <laughs> Mr. Remley. Hmm? Yes? Do you get headaches? <laughs> now that you mention it, yes. Well, don't worry. It's just the bats up there banging to get out. <laughs> now, do you guys want to hear my problem or don't you? Oh, of course they do, Julius. What is your problem? I'm in love with this girl, but she don't love me. That figures. <laughs> Maybe she prefers a human being. <laughs> Bill, that isn't nice. Julius, you must be mistaken. This girl must like you. After all, you're charming, debonair, and handsome. Ain't it the truth, though? <laughs> I'm better looking than Harold, but Emma thinks Harold's got more personality because Harold knows how to play the ukulele. Emma's having a Halloween party at her house tonight, and she invited both of us. But Harold's going to be Emma's escort instead of me. And I thought if I could learn to play the ukulele by tonight, I could be the life of the party and win Emma away from Harold. You have just heard another exciting chapter in the life of Emma and Harold. <laughs> Tune in tomorrow and see if Julius wins Emma from Harold. Remember, same time, same station for a new episode in the loves of Emma Crocodile, Girl Kangaroo. <laughs> Not. It takes time to learn to play the ukulele. Then how am I going to win Emma from Harold? <laughs> Tune in tomorrow and find out. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Harris, if Mr. Remley won't help me, maybe you can. You've got a reputation.
reputation as a ladies' man. How do you get dames to fall in love with you? Now you've struck a nerve, Doc. <laughs> Used to be my business. <laughs> I thought you said ukulele playing was your business. Well, that was a subsidiary of the main enterprise. <laughs> <laughs> now then, Julius, uh, my boy, uh, what is your problem? How many times do I have to tell you? <laughs> Sam and Lillian. They're summer replacements for Emma and Harold. <laughs> I got tired hearing those two names. <laughs> All I want to know is how can I get this girl to fall for me? My boy. My advice to you is to move in with your in-laws. <laughs> if there is not enough room for all of you, let the girl move out, but you stay. <laughs> That's my advice to you. And remember, you heard it here. <laughs> and now, does anyone else have a problem? I got a problem, Mr. Anthony. <laughs> Twenty years ago, my fiancé left me to marry another woman. They now have 12 children, and every time I see him on the street and try to talk to him, he says, go away, stop bothering me, drop dead. Now, my problem is this. Do you think his love for me is on the wane? <laughs> Talk of my problem with my Uncle Oil. He's stupid, but at least they'll listen. Oh, well, his feelings were hurt. Oh, he's going to get over it. Don't oh, worry. I don't know. I don't know. A boy's first love is a very serious affair. Alice is right. I'll never forget my first love affair. Red hair, blue eyes, and gold braces on her teeth. Yeah. <laughs> I wore braces, too. Oh, that must have been romantic. <laughs> it was. Every time we kissed, it looked like two bear traps snapping. At each other. <laughs> Romantically inclined and Frankie, do you remember your first love affair? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, she was a little honey. It was her first love affair, too. Her first and her last. How do you know it was her last? It had to be. Anything after me, honey, is camping out. <laughs> <laughs> yep, when I left that kid, she just gave up. Oh, what happened to the poor child? Well, the last I heard of her, she had a dog team. <laughs> She was hauling blubber to Admiral Byrd. <laughs> you know, you should have helped, Julius. After all, he thought enough of you to come to you for advice, and you should be flattered. Yeah. That's funny. I, I never thought of it that way. You know something, Frankie? She's right. After all, we ought to try to help that little kid somehow. Yeah, maybe we should. Do it a good turn for somebody. Makes you feel good inside. After all, we can't go through life tormenting Julius. We gotta lend a helping hand sometime, and now is the time to do it. <coughs> oh, my scoutmaster will love me for this. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Frankie, come on. Look, I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll call Julius and tell him that we'll meet him at the party tonight and help him promote his romance, okay. huh? Hey, Alice, we don't have a lead-in for your song, so just sing. <laughs> <laughs> Goody, good, good to me. I'll be goody, good, good to you. Give me all your kisses, and I'll give mine to you. Don't go out with anyone else. I'll tell the boys I'm through. Be goody, good, good to me. I'll be goody, good, good to you. When others try to date you, resist with all your might. And we'll tear up our little black book and see you every night. Don't wander in the moonlight with anyone but me. And I won't sit with anyone. 
someone else beneath that apple tree. Be goody good good to me. I'll be goody good good to you. Give me all your kisses and I'll give mine to you. Don't go out with anyone else. I'll tell the boys I'm through. Be goody good good to me. I'll be goody good good to you. When someone else says cuddler, dear, just say no, no can do it. Be goody good good to me. I'll be goody good good to you. It's sure nice of you and Mr. Remmerich to come over to the party and help me. Ah, that's all right, kid. And look, kid, hey, we got a great plan for you. Now, look, you take this ukulele and then get Emma out in the garden, you know, where it's, where it's dark and then, and then serenade her. I told you I can't play the uke. Well, you won't have to. All you do is fake it. I'll be playing my uke. Tell me, kid, where's a good place for me to hide in the garden? Behind the hedges. Oh, that's great. And look, Julius, I'm going to help, too, so while Frankie plays, you see, I'll serenade her. Now, where do you want me to hide while I'm singing? The bottom of the swimming pool is a good spot. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks just the same, Mr. Harris, but you don't have a very romantic voice. What are you talking about? There are only two great romantic baritones in the country. Me and Borgian Monroe. <laughs> <laughs> now, look, kid, all you have to do is to get your girl... Take her out in that garden, and we're going to do the rest. Now, come on, Remley. Let's hide behind the hedge. All right. Gee, it's nice of those guys to help me. If this thing works, maybe I'll win, Emma, and... Julia! Oh, Julia! Here comes Emma now. Be quiet, my little heart. <laughs> Hello, Emma. How would you like to go for a walk in the garden with me? Oh, I'm sorry, Julius, but I can't leave my guest. That's why I came to see you. I want you to take Poodles for a walk. Here's the leash. But, Em, I wanted to take you out for a walk. Maybe later. Thank you, Julia. Everything happens to me. Instead of Em, I get to walk with an Irish setter. <laughs> Quiet, Pooch. <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> Come on, I'll walk you. Why couldn't you be Emma? Then I could tell you what I think of you. I tell you, you're the most wonderful girl I've ever seen in all my life. We'll have to wait, Curly. We got an awful chilly standing out here. You see any sign of Julius and his girl yet? No. It's too dark out here to see anything, but I know that they... Hey, wait a minute. What is it? I hear something. Somebody's Someday, coming. Emma, I hope to make you mine. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. I'm tired of walking. I'm gonna sit down. You sit down, too. <laughs> I said sit down, you <laughs> funny-looking mutt. <laughs> Curly, did you hear what he said to Emma? Yeah. Must be a new teenage term of endearment. <laughs> Gee, what a night. I could get so romantic. But with that moon and those stars, yeah. And I gotta be out here with you. <laughs> Will you please sit still? And stop trying to drag me over to that tree. <laughs> She's trying to... Maybe there's a hammock out there. <laughs> Curly, let's start serenading oh, Emma. No, no, let's listen a little more. This kid's technique fascinates me. <laughs> what has this Harold got that I haven't got? I wish you could tell me. But no, all you do is sit there and scratch yourself. <laughs> Get pretty personal. <laughs> well, that's that modern youth. Everything frank and above board. Why do you keep scratching? <laughs> oh, I see what's wrong. You got a tick in the hairy part of your face. <laughs> Emma, 
Bella don't sound very entrancing. <laughs> Pretty sloppy hostess. The least she could do is shave. <laughs> You feel better, huh? Oh, now you want to play. Okay, sit up on your hind legs and I'll scratch your stomach. Curly, now is the time. <laughs> Ain't she sweet? See her walking down the street. Oh, I ask you very confidentially, Ain't Wait a minute, sweet. wait a minute. What are you guys doing? Keep batching, kid. We're with you. <laughs> <laughs> that you weren't a dog. Julius, I never want to see you again. Get out and take your two little hoodlum friends with you. Goodbye, Mr. Abruzio. But Emma... Emma! Miss Hoggenschlager! <laughs> Alice and Phil will be back in just a moment. But first, here's your Rexall family druggist. Sometimes when a customer asks me to recommend a brand of aspirin, I, I wish I could show them one of the tests given Rexall aspirin. Well, why? What is it? Well, uh, two glass tubes are filled with ordinary water. Now, at exactly the same instant, a Rexall aspirin tablet is dropped into one tube, and a tablet by any one of Rexall's famous competitors is dropped into the other. Then you see an interesting thing happen. The Rexall aspirin tablet disintegrates long before it reaches the bottom of its tube. What does that mean? Well, ma'am, it means that when swallowed with water, Rexall aspirin disintegrates before it even reaches your stomach. Now, the faster its rate of disintegration, the faster an aspirin tablet can go to work for you. And that's why it's important for you to know that by laboratory test, Rexall aspirin disintegrates completely faster than any other leading brand tested. Golly, I'll remember that. And remember this also. You can depend on any drug product that bears the name Rexall. Good health to all from Rexall. I'm sorry, folks, we're a little late. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Good night. This program is produced and directed by Paul Phillips. Included in today's cast was Gloria McMillan. The part of Frankie Remley was played by Elliot Lewis, and Julius was played by Walter Tetley. The ukulele was played by Frank Remley. Alice Fay appeared through the courtesy of 20th Century Fox. Here's still another example of Rexall's creed of always a little better quality, always a little more quantity. Rexall Milk of Magnesia gives you one-third more for your money. Here's what I mean. Many other leading brands of Milk of Magnesia come in 9 or 12-ounce bottles. But Rexall gives you 16 ounces, a full pint, and at the same price as competing brands of smaller quantity. Yes, Rexall Milk of Magnesia gives you one-third more for your money. Ask for it wherever you see the orange and blue Rexall sign on the window. And remember, you can depend on any drug product that bears the name Rexall. <laughs> Stay tuned for the adventures of Sam Spade, which follows immediately on NBC.